This book is called Gugu's House. Gugu means grandmother. And it was written by and illustrated by Catherine St Africa is a large continent. There are more than 50 countries that make up the African continent. But this story, Gugu's House, takes place in one of them, called Zimbabwe. This is Zimbabwe. Around it are South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, and Mozambique. But this story, Gugu's House, takes place in Zimbabwe. Come, my little one, called Gugu. We will have a cool drink of water as soon as we get home. I'm coming, Gugu. Kukamba struggled to keep up with her grandmother as they walked along the long, dusty path from the bus stop. The sun beat down, and her bundle was heavy. She couldn't wait to get to Gugu's house. Kukamba loved visiting Gugu. No one in the city had a beautiful rambling house like hers. There were wild elephants sculpted and painted on the compound walls. There was an airplane flying over the courtyard gate. Best of all was the big painted zebra Kukamba mounted to gallop across the dry, grassy veldt. Every morning after breakfast, the men in the village set off with their livestock to find fresh grazing, and the women set off to tend their crops. Kukamba stayed in the village to help Gugu. They fed the chickens, they swept the house and courtyard clean with long brushes, they fetched water from the well, they collected firewood. Then Gugu and Kukumba worked on the house. Gugu mixed mud and dung to make new walls and animals. She showed Kukumba how to shape little zebras, leopards, birds, and lions. When the sun baked the walls dry and hard, Gugu collected ash from last night's fire for white paint, and charcoal to crush into black paint. Cucumba scooped clay from the riverbed to mix into red paint. In the kraal, they found cattle dung to pound into green paint. They squatted in the shady side of the courtyard to grind the colors with stones. Gugu gave Cucumba a brush she had made from goat hairs. Cucumba carefully mixed water into the colored powders and began to paint. Sometimes her lines wobbled a little bit, but Gugu didn't seem to notice. Hey, that is a fine zebra, my child. You are going to be a very fine artist one day. Cucumba mm -hmm. trembled with excitement. An artist? Like Gugu? Can I come and paint with you next year too, Gugu? Next year, and the next year after that, and the year after that too. Gugu plucked her tongue and smiled her big, toothy smile. In the evening, the women arrived home from the fields, tired and hot. They sighed. Oh, because the rains were late, and aish, there, there wasn't enough water for the maize and vegetables. The feverish day faded into a feverish night, and the men came home. Hot and tired, they grumbled, because the boreholes were drying up and turning salty. And, eesh, there wasn't enough grazing for the cattle and goats. 
no one noticed Cucumba's paintings. After supper, everyone sat around the fire in a circle, weary and irritable. Cucumba climbed into Gugu's lap. Tell us a rabbit story, please, Gugu, she whispered. Gugu's head was as full of stories as her house was full of animals. She poked the fire with a long stick, looking for a good one. Tell the one about the race with the tortoise. It was Cucumba's favorite. Eh, Gugu's eyes twinkled. Even though she had told the story of the race between the rabbit and the tortoise many times, it would surely raise everyone's spirits. The villagers listened expectantly, waiting for the end. At last, that old rabbit finished the race. Aish! But there was that tortoise again, waiting for him, just like at the baobab tree, and at the river, and at the kopi. That rabbit, he just sat down and cried and cried. Cheer up, rabbit, said tortoise. 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 Rabbit looked up. Ekona, there were four tortoises clucking sympathetically around him. Rabbit just stared at all those tortoises. Then he slapped the ground. Hey, you devils tricked me. Everyone laughed and laughed. For days afterward, when people passed Gugu's house, they remembered her story. Cheer up, rabbit! They'd call out to each other and chuckle. Finally, one night, while the people slept, a thick blanket of clouds crept slowly over the sky and blotted out the small bright stars and the thin crescent moon. Thunder rumbled slowly across the sky and echoed over the veldt. One by one, the people came out of their huts, rubbing the sleep from their eyes. A few drops of rain spluttered and sizzled on the warm stones around the fireplace. Suddenly, a <coughs> flash of lightning ripped open the clouds, and heavy curtains of rain tumbled down to the parched earth. Trilled the women in their singing voices. Gugu clapped her hands and hugged Kukamba. The men grabbed their wives and danced around crazily. Yo, 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 yo! Even the dogs chased each other in circles, barking like mad things. It rained heavily for several days. At last, Kukamba awoke to a bright, sunny morning. Aish! All Gugu's paintings had washed away, and, and some of the courtyard walls were falling down. The great zebra was just a soggy mound of mud. Oh, hey, Gugu, cried Kukamba. Look what that terrible storm has done to your house. Gugu was already sweeping the water out of the courtyard with her brush. Oh, the storm was not terrible, my precious, she said. The storm brought us rain, which blesses the land so plants can grow and the animals have food to eat. But, Gugu, what has happened to all our beautiful colors? There is only brown mud everywhere, wailed Cucumba. Gugu smiled. Come, my little one, 
and I will show you where all the colors have gone. She took Kukamba's hand, and together they walked out into the hills over a carpet of yellow doivilkis. A plum-colored starling whistled from the branches of a flowering baobab, and masked weavers wove nests among the fluffy lavender and yellow lantern flowers in the sickle bush. Gugu waved her hand up to the trees like a magician and then rested it lightly on Kukamba's small shoulder. There are your colors, little one, Gugu said softly. See how the rain has washed them clean and hung them out to dry. Kukamba gazed around her. Then she remembered the muddy house and she tugged her grandmother's hand. Come, Gugu, she said. We have work to do. Yeah, Gugu. The house is waiting for us. Let's go. The end. And really, another beginning. Sometimes writers create a character based on a real person. Catherine Stock created the character of Gugu, the grandmother in this story, because her great friend, Mrs. Kosa, is very much like Gugu. Catherine has traveled extensively in Zimbabwe, and her friend, a great artist, is the person on whom Catherine Stock based her character, Gugu. There's also a long glossary here of some of the words that sound different to us because they come from the Afrikaans language. And you can look at those and find out that a veldt, for instance, is a big grassy field. And other words that sound just a little unusual to you. They're here. Of Catherine Stock on top of a zebra, like the one in the story. Catherine lives part of the year in New York City and part of the year in France and is an amazing artist who has done other books for young learners as well. In some sense, this story is about the people of Zimbabwe having to do a balancing act between the dry and the wet seasons. Here, the last image from the book, is Kukamba balancing on Gugu's zebra. And that is the book, Gugu's House, written by, illustrated by, Catherine Stock.